Hello, my name is Keshwani. That's K E S H W A N I. Keshwani. We are here because we want to prepare for the GRE. We have been solving math problems out of this book here, the official guide to the GRE, the third edition. If you do not own this book already, purchase one immediately. You're going to need it. Today is our lesson number 131. Day 3131. 3 is to signify the fact that we are in the third edition. Third edition, day, thir day 131. Today we'll begin the practice test that you find on page number 355. Please turn to it. Let me just make sure also it's 355. It's actually 354. It begins on page number 354, section number section number 5, page 354, section number 5. Let's get going, shall we? Yesterday we finished doing the very last problem, uh, practice problem that appears in the textbook. We are done with it. We finished those data analysis exercises. Data analysis exercises that you find on page number, that you will find on page number 320 through 324. We did all of those and today we'll start, as I said, the two exams. Exam number one today. Let's take a look at the first one. It's a quantitative comparison question. It's a quantitative comparison question. In column A we have quantity X and column B we have five. column B we have five. Problem number one. And the picture that is given to us looks something like this. We are given a circle and inside the circle we have a triangle that looks like this. It makes a 90 degree angle here. And we are told that this is three. This is X. And then we are given one more triangle that looks something like this. Again, it makes a 90 degree angle. And this time we are told that this side is 4 and this side is 5. Is it too much writing actually? Too much writing for something that is very simple. But of course I had to put it on because otherwise we can't talk about it. Just make sure that this is all we, that is all that is given to us and we, we, and we are asked to compare x versus 5. x versus 5 is very straightforward as we can clearly see. It's a 3, 4, 5 triangle. This is the right angle. This is the right angle triangle, so if you were to draw the dotted line, it's 3, 4, 5, and this distance from here to here is the radius of the circle because we are told that this point O is the center. Point O is the center. It says O is the center of the circle right in the picture there. If that's the radius, and if it's 5, then this distance right here is also 5. And now we look at the other triangle, the second triangle, and the second triangle we find that this side is equal to 3, the hypotenuse is 5. If hypotenuse is 5 and one other side is 3, the other side has to be 4. The other side would have to be 4. And that's it. x equals to 4. x would have to equal 4. And therefore, 4 is less than 5. The answer is b. answer is b. The percentile, if you're interested, 65% of people got this question right. Do not, do not ask me why one third of the people missed it. But they did. Number two. In number two, again, column A, column B. In column A, we are told that A ran four-fifths of the kilometer. And in column B, we have B. We are told that B ran 800 meters. B ran 800 meters. Again, we know that one kilometer, kilo means thousand, one kilometer is a thousand meter. This, this, is, this, is, this is too silly is a thousand meter. So if you were to take a fifth of it, a fifth of a thousand is two hundred meter. In other words, in other words, one fifth, one fifth of the kilometer is two hundred meter and therefore four fifths of the kilometer would be four times two hundred which is eight hundred. They are equal. These two quantities are equal. The answer is, the answer is C. These two quantities in the two columns are equal. I picked it up because I wanted to see the percentile. 83% of people got this question right. Again, if 83% people, person, person of the people got it right, that's pretty good news. But the flip side of that is that 17% 17, 17 of people, almost fifth of the people, managed to miss it. I do not know why. I do not know why. Let's look at problem number three. In problem number three, we are told that x is less than y, which in turn is less than z. And in column A, we have x plus y plus z divided by 3. In other words, the average of the three quantities. And in column B, we have y, 
which is the median, which is the median because it's right in the middle. We do not know their value, but we do know that y is in the middle because it's, it's, it's given to us. So the easiest, the quickest, the fastest, the simplest, the most economical way here is to simply plug in numbers instead of trying to analyze it theoretically. Do you understand? Just plug in numbers, something simple. Anything that you like, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 1, 2, 3, whatever you like. Let's put in 1, 2, 3. 1 plus 2 plus 3 divided by, divided by 3. In other words, 1, 2, and 3. 1 is less than 2 and 2 is less than 3. It works. In that case, the average of 1, 2, 3 would of course be 2. And y is the second column. And y is also 2. So you see, we are plugging in 1 for x, 1 for x, and y for 2. So y is also 2. So they are equal in this case. In this case, they are equal. But what happens if we do something else? So in this scenario, the scenario that we presented here, the answer is C. Now, if you were to pick answer choice C and move on, then the claim that we will end up making here is that the quantity in two columns are always equal. Always, always, and always equal. Is that the case? But we must try it one more time to see. Now instead of wasting your time trying to, put, uh, trying to put brand new numbers, trying to put in something brand new numbers, don't waste your time. Just make a quick change. Here we have 1, 2, 3. 1, 2, 3. Let's make x instead of 1. Let's put it negative 1. Again, negative 1 is less than 2 and 2 is less than 3. And negative 1, negative 1, and 2 and 3, now their average will no longer be 2. Will no longer be 2. This quantity is 2, which means the answer before was C. But now it is not C. What it is, it doesn't matter. What the answer is now, you, don't, you do not have to waste your time trying to figure out the average of negative 2. We do not have to waste our time trying to figure out the average of negative 1, 2, and 3. We do not have to do that. All we have to understand is that the average of these three quantity is not 2. Whether it's more than 2 or less than 2 is completely irrelevant. The point here is that the answer before was C, and now it is not C. And therefore the answer is D. The answer change. Answer change from what to what? Answer change from C to something other than C. What that something other than C happens to be, we do not care. Do you understand? Here, the percentile, in case you're curious, is 62%. 62%. Almost, almost two-fifths of the people missed it. Let's look at the next column, column uh, the next, uh, next question rather. This was question number three. Let's look at question number four here. Question number four, we are given a triangle here, a right angle triangle that is. This quantity is x, this quantity is y, distance from here to here. Let's give them name. Let's call them a, b, c. Let's give this vertices name so that we can talk about them. So we are told that the distance a, b is x, distance a, c is y. We are further told that this angle is 50, 50 degrees. And we are asked to compare column A versus column B. In column A we have x over y, and here we have 1. What can we do here? What can we do? Well, what we need to understand here is that in any triangle, in any triangle, doesn't matter what the shape of the triangle is, whether it's right angle, obtuse angle, acute angle, equilateral triangle, isosceles triangle, it doesn't matter what kind of triangle it is. In any triangle, the bigger the angle, the bigger, the longer the side opposite to it. Which is why, which is why in a right angle triangle, in a right angle triangle, the biggest angle is, is this angle right here, the right angle, and therefore the side facing it is the longest side. Hypotenuse is the longest side because it faces the biggest angle. The next bigger, the next bigger side in this angle, in this triangle, is the side that faces 50 degrees. Because if this is 50, this angle must be 40. And if that angle is 40, the smallest side is y. Y is the smallest side. The short, shortest side rather if you like. Y is the shortest side. Y is going to be shortest side because x faces 50 degrees. X is going to be bigger than y. Here x is bigger than y. X appears in the numerator. If numerator is bigger than y, if numerator is bigger than a denominator, numerator is bigger than a denominator, keeping in mind that we don't keeping in mind here that we don't have to deal with the complication of negative numbers because these are side, these are distances, they are both positive. X we just established is bigger than y because x faces 50 degrees and y faces 40 degrees. So if x is bigger than y, then if numerator is bigger than denominator, then this quantity, whatever it is, is going to be more than 1. Because numerator is bigger than y. Because, because x is bigger than y. The answer is A. Answer is A. And the percentile here 
believe it or not, more than more than half the people, the majority of the people, had trouble with it. They got it wrong. Let's look at number five. Question number five. As we move up, they're going to get a little trickier. Do you understand? You're going to have to pay our attention. Here we are told that zero is less than x and x is less than y and y in turn is less than one. In other words, everything is between zero and one. In column A, we have one minus y and in column B, we have y minus x. So let's plug in something here again. Okay, and most people, when they look some, when they look at something like this, most people will plug in something nice, something simple, something civilized, like maybe maybe one quarter, maybe x is one quarter, and y is one half. That seems like a reasonable reasonable thing to see, a reasonable thing to say rather. Or they will plug in maybe one third and two thirds. Something simple, as I said, something nice, something civilized. Let's start out with that first, and let's see what we can do later on. You're going to have to obviously plug in twice. It is the second time that you plug in, that's where you have to be creative. That's where you have to think outside the box. That's where you have to think unlike an average person. Do you understand? But let's first see what the average person would do here. So x is one quarter, y is half. If x is one quarter, if x is one quarter and y is half, then one minus y, which is one minus half, one minus half is half. And here, y is one half, x is one quarter, one half minus one quarter would be one quarter. And of course we know that one quarter is less than one half. In this scenario we can clearly say that the answer is A. In this scenario. That does not mean that the quantity in column A we can go ahead and claim that it is going to be always, always, always bigger just by doing it once. No, no, no. We have to, we have to cover our bases. We have, to cover, we have to look at all the possibilities, which is why it's important to understand, which is why it's important to understand that when we pick answer choice A, the claim that we're making is that the quantity in column A is always, always, always equal, not just in this instance. So let's plug in second time around. And this time, let's be creative. Let's be gutsy. Let's not play safe. Let's not, let's not be nice. Let's be nasty. Plug in the extreme. The extreme that you can think of. We are told that x is less than 0. It's not equal to 0. But let's make this thing as close to 0 as we can. As close to 0 as we can. How about not exactly zero, but how about one over one thousand? One one thousand, one one thousand is point zero zero one. But well, that's pretty close to zero. It's not zero, but it's close, pretty close to zero. Why we are told it's less than one? It cannot be equal to one, but it can be darn close to one. Let's put in, for y, let's put in nine, 999 over one thousand for y. Let's see what happens now. So we have one minus y, one which is which is 1,000 over 1,000 minus y, which is 999 over 1,000. And we end up, when we subtract, we end up at 1, 1,000 in this column. Let's look at column B. In column B, we have y minus x. y, we are plugging in 999 over 1,000. And x, we are plugging in 1 over 1,000. And we'll end up at 998 over 1,000. 998 is almost 1. It's, it's about 1. So now we are comparing something that's close to 1. We are comparing something 1, 1,000 to something that is close to 1. Obviously 1 is bigger than 1, 1,000. Now the answer choice is B. Before it was A. Now it's B. Why did the answer switch? Answer switch because now we are looking at the extreme, extreme scenario. And if you understand the concept, if you understand the concept conceptually, if you understand it, we, we don't have to actually do it out. We can simply look at it and, and understand it conceptually. This is what's going on. Okay, listen carefully. This, this is what's going on. They tell you that y is less than 0. But in theory, y could be very close to 0. y could be, uh, asymptotically speaking, y is 0. Y can, uh, rather, x, x is 0. For example, x can be 0. 0. 0. 0. 0. 0. 0. all the way until, until the cows come home. And then you put a 1, it's 0. In other words, if x is 0 or very close to 0, then here we have y minus 0, it will simply be y. And y is less than 1, but if you put in something very close to 1, then you'll end up with something close to 1 minus something close to 0, just like here. So 1 minus 0 will give you 1, just like it did. And similarly here, if you put in something close to 1 for y, 1 minus y will be 0, as we can see, it's almost close to 0. So this quantity will become 0, and this quantity will become 1, and the answer will switch. 
let's look at number six. What do we have in number six? Number six deals with probability and we are told that small letter p is the probability that event E will occur. And how do we write the probability of an event? This is how we write it with a capital P and with the name of the event. This is the name of the event. Event is called event E. That's the name of the event. And the odds that that event will happen is represented by small letter P. It's some number. It's some number obviously between 0 and 1. And therefore the odds that it will not happen, odds that it will not happen, how do we represent the odds of something not happening? By putting a bar on the top. Would have to be equal, would have to equal 1 minus P. But they're telling us that it is equal to, this quantity is equal to letter S. It doesn't matter. The point here is, they're calling it S. If they want to call it S, that's fine. The point here is, what we need to understand is that, if the odds that something will happen is P, and the odds that something, the odds that it will not happen is S, then P plus S would have to equal 1. That's like column A. What about column B? Column B, let's plug in some number if you like. Let's pretend that the odds that it will happen is 3 quarter. There's a 75% chance that it will happen. But if there's a 75% chance that it will happen, then there must be a 25% chance that it will not happen. The point here is, the point here is not that it is 75% and this is 25%. The point here is that when we multiply the two quantities, which is what we have in the second column, if we multiply the two quantities, we have to understand that both of these quantities are fraction. These are always going to be fractions because these are probability. They are always going to be fractions. So what happens when you multiply two fractions? When you multiply two fractions, the product of course is always going to be less than one. Always going to be less than one. Three quarter. Three. We don't have to do it out to understand that. Three quarter times a quarter is going to be three sixteenths. We don't have to do any of this thing to understand that it is less than one. When you multiply two fractions, the product is always less than one if the two fractions are positive. Actually, even if they're negative, it's, uh, Ignore the last part that I said. The product of two fraction is always less than one. Do you understand? Even it doesn't matter what they are. I'm just going to do one more just for for the sake of doing it. For example, if somebody tells us there's a 90% chance that it will happen, then there must be 10% chance that it will not happen. Again, nine tenth times one tenth is going to be nine tenth times one tenth is going to be nine one hundred, and nine one hundred of course is less than one. The other extreme scenario, if you're interested in the extreme scenario, these are the extreme scenario very quickly, just to satisfy the curiosity. The extreme scenario is that there is a 100% chance that it will happen. If there's a 100% chance that it will happen, then the odds that it will not happen is zero. In which case, it's just going to be one times zero. One times zero is zero. One times zero is zero, and again, zero is less than one. It's not going to change anything. Or maybe we had the other way around. Or maybe it was the other way around. The odds that it will happen is zero, and therefore the odds that it will not happen is 1. It's guaranteed that it will not happen. It doesn't change anything. Now it's 0 times 1. It's still 0. So in the extreme case, the product is going to be 0. In all the other cases, when product is, product is going to be 0, when event E is either 100% guaranteed to happen, or event E is 100% guaranteed not to happen. On the Other than those two scenarios, if event E is probable, if event E is probable, but not impossible, in other words, this probability is between 0 and 1, then whatever it is, you get the idea. The product of the two fractions is going to be less than 1. I'm going to stop right here. Oh, the answer choice in this case, because this column A is bigger than this one, it's answer choice is A. And here, the percentile drops drastically. It drops from, oh, I never give you the percentile for this one, number 5. In number five again, majority of the people, majority of the people missed it. Forty-seven percent of the people got it right. Fifty-three percent got it wrong. And question number six, the percentile drops even further. Only thirty-six percent of the people got it right. More than sixty percent, three more than three-fifths of the people had trouble with it because they don't analyze it thoroughly. They just want it. They want a quick answer. They want an easy answer. It doesn't work that way. You have to put in the time. You have to put in the effort. And you have to sit there and think logically, rationally, calmly, and collectedly. Do you understand? I'll see you tomorrow, okay?
That's the end of the sermon. Amen.